We stay ready so we don't have to get ready. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Pastor's q and I'm your host, Abby, and with me today is Pastor Dave. Hello, Abby. And Pastor Ty. Hey, everyone. If you have any questions you would like to send in for future Q&A programs, please email them to questions at watersprings.net, and we'll get those questions answered. Uh, Pastor Ty, would you like to pray for us before we start? I would love to. Yes. Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity to answer questions from the Bible uh, as we come up towards Christmas to just talk about the Christmas season and talk about traditions and things that are fun and things just to connect with people. But Lord, number one, we just want to make sure that people understand, Jesus, you came and died for us on the cross. Mm -hmm. You came to take away the sin of the world. And Lord, you came into that you came into that manger, Lord, as king of the universe. And so, Lord, we just thank you that you've given us hope, you give us joy, and uh, give us the opportunity right now to in, have fun and to answer some questions. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, so your first question is, what would the weather have been like when Jesus was born? Ooh, that's a great question. Dave and I were just there, actually. We, uh, we were. We, we were, were in Bethlehem. the shepherd's fields in Bethlehem just... Uh, Three weeks ago? I, yeah, I can't yeah. remember. Uh, it feels like a whirlwind. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's the date today? The 23rd. The 20, so, it's almost 23rd. Yeah, Christmas it's almost, is in yeah, two one days. One month ago. Yeah, a month ago. <clears throat> one month ago we were there. Yeah. Um, well, f uh, one of the things that we see in Luke chapter 2 is it says that they were watching their flocks by night. And so one of the things that everybody has to realize is it gets cold in Jerusalem. I mean, it's it's... It's not the highest elevation in Israel, but you are up in elevation, and it gets so cold real quick, in Bethlehem. And like for that. people who so, don't know, right? When you say Jerusalem, Bethlehem's only five miles from Jerusalem, right? Yeah, you yeah, can. So it's that same. Yeah, area. and so when you're when you're near Mount Zion or you have some, you can usually see the mountains of Bethlehem. So yeah. everything is really close, and um, and so to keep that in mind is that um, if it were December ish. There could be snow in Jerusalem. Right? It is known to snow. In fact, uh, the place we go where uh, we believe that Jesus was crucified right outside the Damascus Gate, there's a, there's a mountain. It's called the Place of the Skull. And so it was a mountain that had like, it looked like a skull. But there was a heavy snowfall a while ago that actually defaced yeah, the within face. Within the last 10 years. Yeah, within the last <clears throat> 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so um, the weather would have been appropriate. This is what's important. The weather would have been appropriate for shepherds to be in the fields watching their flocks at night. And if they're watching their flocks at night, they're probably watching out for predators, which means it could have been during uh, the birthing season. So mm -hmm. it was probably spring. So mm -hmm. it was yeah. probably cool, like a, like it was probably cooler, but um, you know, probably pushing sometime April, May, June, we don't know, but it would have been warmer uh, yeah. when Jesus was yeah. born. Mm -hmm. um, keeping in mind, you. If you're going to call for a census for everybody, you want people to be able to travel. So, <laughs> hey, we're going to make you travel, you know, all this distance. So right. let's do it at the worst possible time. Let's yeah. do it when it's snowy and it's yeah, difficult. Not going to happen. Uh, even, Could, even the worst leaders. wants their tax money. Yeah, because they, they, <laughs> exactly. the whole point was taxes. So, yeah. so yeah, it was probably, it was probably you know, late spring, but it was an evening right. in late spring. Yeah. Absolutely. You know? Awesome. Of course, that brings the next question. Was Jesus born in December? <laughs> we don't know what day he was born on. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Question number two. How old would Jesus have been when the wise men and shepherds came to see him? Well, it depends on your tradition. It does depend right? on your tradition. So if you look at your calendars, um, many of your calendars on January 6th will say the Epiphany. Okay. Well, what's the Epiphany? Um, in Roman Catholic tradition, the Epiphany is the day that the Magi, the wise men, uh, showed up. Uh, to see Jesus. And so that's January 6th. So um, and that's where the 12 days of Christmas come from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this year my wife and I uh, will be taking off uh, Christmas afternoon uh, for Ireland and we'll be there for the, well, for 11 of the 12 days of Christmas. It's a big deal in Ireland. 
they go through the 12 days of Christmas and all. Um, but the, the 12th day of Christmas is January 6th, the Epiphany, the day the Magi showed up. So if you follow the, the uh, Roman Catholic tradition, he was 12 days old. I don't follow that tradition. Um, but no. So uh, when you look at the scripture, and you're just, it's, just, it's simply just looking at the Bible. It's all in its context. Um, Herod in Matthew chapter 2, uh, verse 16 through 18, makes the point after the Magi come, and by the way, the whole city was afraid, so don't, don't think three dudes, three camels. These guys were from Babylon. They were from that fertile crescent. They would have been traveling in quite a large number, um, servants and everything else with all these gifts. And so they come in, it disturbs all of Jerusalem. And when you're in Jerusalem, you can see how that would that would be easy to do. We were at the, the Lion's Gate. Right. Um, and we had people from, where, where were they from? Do you remember? I do. Uh, but it, it looked like the Queen of Sheba was coming oh, in. Oh, uh, er, er, uh, 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 Eritrea. Um, yeah, so they, yeah. Eritrea. But they were, all these people were coming in and dancing, oh, and they're all dressed crazy. in white, and they're coming into Jerusalem. It was amazing. You could see easily how because of the way streets are, how it would disrupt the whole community. Right. But then Herod says, I want you to go kill the threat, all babies that are two years and younger. Mm -hmm. And so what this does to consider is that he asks them very specifically about the times. So he says to them, he wants to know. And so the, the Magi are telling him what the religious leaders should have already known. The religious leaders go check it out. Um, and and then he says, hey, kill all the babies two years and younger. So there is a possibility he was somewhere near two years old mm -hmm. when the Magi came. That, that, that's I hold to that, but that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, we still don't know for sure, but that right. seems to make sense when you're looking at the well, scripture. Well, and if you're traveling by camel. It know, takes time. It takes time. Right. Yeah. yeah, it does. I can never pronounce that. Is it, or how do you pronounce that word right there? Aretha. Uh, it, it's, Aritra. It's, so <laughs> so, yeah. it's from Ethiopia. Yeah. They yeah. speak Ethiopian and Arab, uh, Arabic. And it's Eritrea, Eritrea. I can never say it correctly, and I always feel like an ignoramus. Anyway, that's where those folks were from. I think it is Eritrea. I and think the EDA should be connected. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're, they were a beautiful people, and their, their clothing was oh gorgeous. Oh, my yes. goodness. The men and the women. Oh, yeah. They came in, and it was... If we actually turned and went out to the Golden Gate, right? right, Because there was no way we were getting oh, uh, into the city at that point because there were so many people coming in. And so uh, you, you, you do start going, oh, well, like what was going on, you know? And mm -hmm. so some people are like, uh, we used to always do this when we were, uh, the kids were little, uh, we'd set up the manger, we'd make sure Jesus wasn't in it because he wasn't born yet. Mm -hmm. We'd put the wise men somewhere else in the house and slowly move them towards the manger. Uh, you know, <laughs> because cause that picture of, you know, Mary, Joseph, baby Jesus, and the three wise men all at the same time. Well, that's part of our tradition. Mm -hmm. uh, some of our, uh, our church, our church tradition. tradition and, you know, a little bit of tabloid theology, how things are printed yeah. or drawn or things like that. That's, that's one of the reasons, Ty, that I, I don't mean to interrupt, but that's one of the reasons I love going to Bethlehem when we take our Israel tours. Um, we both have friends who refuse to go to Bethlehem, and for good reason. For good uh, reason. Yep. Uh, I question it. But yeah, one of the reasons I love going to Bethlehem is because it it's a slummy town, and it was a slummy town when he was born there. Yeah. And when you look at our Christmas cards, and they're so cute with the pretty little green rolling hills and the little motels, and oh look at Mary and Joseph and everybody's so cute. It's not cute. It's ugly. It's Think Detroit, think Los Angeles, think Chicago, think inner city in the Middle East. And that's where it's, Jesus was born. It's a nasty place. And the the shepherd's fields are not these cute little rolling green hills. They're rocky. It, they're hard to move around mm -hmm. on. They're hard to walk in. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting place, isn't it? It is. Yeah, Very but it so. kind of takes those cute little... Christmas card pictures. And, oh, yeah. And, you know, the Courier and Ives vibe. Uh -huh. Just get that out of your mind. Oh, it was a absolutely. slum. He was born in a slum. He was born to the, the poorest of the poor. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 All right. Question number three What is your favorite Christmas hymn? Ooh, I like a rebel. 
Um, and so for me, when I look historically, um, Isaac Watts talked to his dad at one point, and he said, Dad, the music in the church is just lame. And he's, his, his dad said, well, then do something about it. And so Isaac Watts started writing hymns, and people would actually get up and walk out. When I, so you think about it right now, mm -hmm. how revered Isaac Watts is and the music that he wrote, especially some, some of the Christmas music he wrote. And people were so angry about it. Like, and it, even like people fight about music today. You have to understand, people used to storm out when they would sing an Isaac Watts hymn, like this guy is anathema. And so one of my favorite Christmas hymns is Joy to the World because it's the whole story. Mm -hmm. It's not just... It's not just Jesus came, it's actually the whole of the gospel. It's, Jesus, it's, it's the reconciliation of all things, that fourth verse. Uh, and I always love, no more let sin and sorrows grow. Uh, and I, I thought, man, it's just, it speaks so much better than he rules the world with your finger. And just, he rules the world. And that's the, that's why I was like, so that's my favorite hymn because I technically as a Christmas song, we can sing it year round because it's the complete story of Jesus. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. That's, that's my, that's my favorite one. Yeah, I actually have, have two favorites, one that's accurate and one that's um, terribly inaccurate, but it's just still one of my favorites. Uh, but my favorite is um, actually an Advent hymn. It's not a Christmas hymn. People typically will sing it like a, a Christmas Eve service, mm -hmm. but in truth, it should be sung throughout Advent, um, and it's O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. just... Mm -hmm. That one just gives me chills every time. And my second one, and if I'm going to be honest, <laughs> I'll probably get, we'll get an email on it. Oh well, tough. Dave at Watersprings.net. Uh, James Taylor, his version of it is the by far the best. Uh, in the bleak midwinter, is, mm -hmm. is this? I love it. Um, mm -hmm. In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind may moan. Earth stood hard as iron, water like a stone. Snow had fallen, snow on snow on snow in the bleak midwinter long, long ago. And he talked about the, the angels and the cherubim and the seraphim all gathering around the Holy Mother. It's, just, it's, it's a beautiful song. I know he wasn't born in winter. I get it. But it's a beautiful, beautiful song. So how about you? Um, I actually am torn between I, my favorites are Joy to the World and O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Oh, there you go. Look at yeah. Yeah, we didn't I set was, this up. This was no. not a setup. And I was actually talking to someone about this the other day, and those were, yeah, yeah. those were the two that, that I really resonate with. Yeah, so. they're, they are beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Question number four. What is a must-have food for your Christmas dinner? Oh, oh, man, that's a... We should ask the guys behind the microphones on that one. Uh, but, wow. Uh my life has changed so much that's hard because see for me that I, I would have gone with uh, you know uh, uh, probably corned beef and hash it's oh, probably yeah? my and with scrambled eggs that's probably my my Christmas food but it's not necessarily for dinner um, and so we have a tendency we have a really big breakfast and so we and my family used to always do brunch so Christmas dinner was never a tradition mm -hmm. because you were just you were full all yeah. day like it was a Sabbath day, you're just eating all day. And so, um, but I know for my wife's family, it's it's probably was a probably a bird of some kind, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. not like a, but a yeah, turkey probably. Mm -hmm. but yes, but I'm having a hard time getting Will Ferrell out of my head right now with the syrup, you know, <laughs> the candy cane. spaghetti and syrup. <laughs> You know, I've never yeah. had maple syrup spaghetti on spaghetti. And maple syrup. I think yeah. that's no yeah. thing. Yeah, that's that's, no. that's my wife. My wife makes the most incredible holiday ham, and um, even though she's vegan, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's funny. On Christmas Eve, we do Christmas tamales. That is a must-have, and then um, on Christmas morning, when we're home, uh, she'll she will have baked. Low and slow all night. Her most incredible holiday ham. It's just I can't even I can't describe to you how amazing our home smells when when you wake up on Christmas morning. It's just like oh my goodness. I think I'm in heaven. Um, it's it's just amazing. And so yeah, Sylvia's holiday ham on Christmas, but on Christmas Eve tamales. Yeah. You? Um. So we change. It depends on the year. We'll have you know steak or rib roast or a turkey or whatnot but my favorite side is brussels sprouts i love brussels sprouts so much yes. okay. cut um, cut yes give me, but you give, me some, to, give me some we're gonna yes. edit this you, brussels sprouts production no, no, no. that's awesome but you cut them or you cook cook them 
with balsamic glaze mm -hmm. and pancetta and goat cheese and dried cranberries and sometimes some pine nuts and they're just bacon delicious. In there? That's the pancetta. The, oh, you yeah. use pancetta instead of yeah. that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, okay. it's amazing. Highly mm -hmm. recommend it. You know, okay. we have yeah. to share I love a recipe, and respect though. you okay. immensely, but I'm not going to lie. You just came down the wrong. It's, <laughs> the, only, it's the only time I She's up a rung for me, dude, so, so she's still to zero, so it's all good. They're Brussels so good. sprouts, aren't they like little miniature cabbages? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah and they're Delicious. awesome. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for watching Pastor's Q&A. That's yeah. all the time like, we have for today. We answered some questions. We hope you have a very Merry Christmas Merry celebrating Christmas. the birth of our Lord. Mm -hmm. And again, if you have questions for future programs, email them to questions at watersprings.net, and we'll see you next week. Yeah. Send us your Brussels sprout recipes for Dave. Yes. Merry Christmas. You Merry, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Love the camera. <laughs> Love the camera. Love the camera. Love the camera. Love the camera. Yeah,